Thermal or infrared camera was once technology only the military could afford. But thanks to Cadillac, I'm going to be mounting a thermal night vision camera on my 2001 Ford Super Duty. For the 2000 model year, Cadillac offered as an option something that no car company had ever done before. For an extra $2,000, the DeVille DTS could be equipped with a thermal night vision camera and head-up display. While one of the more expensive options, this was at a time when a thermal imaging camera cost tens of thousands of dollars and was something that only the military had really ever used. The camera was mounted behind the front grille. Instead of the Cadillac badge, a circular opening in the grille was left for the camera lens to see out of. The camera itself was made by Raytheon, the same company that was also making them for U.S. military applications. What makes this camera ideal is that it is powered by 12 volts DC, and the video output is standard NTSC, which makes it compatible with almost any video screen. When looking for a surplus camera, make sure the front lens isn't cracked as that lets water and moisture into the housing and over time will kill the camera. Second generation camera does have a replaceable front lens, and there is a GM procedure for how to do it, but locating one of the lens kits may be impossible with how long these have been out of production. Second, make sure the camera actually works. For me, it's full of electronic wizardry that is likely outside the realm of a DIY repair. Now the bracket on here, it's the standard DTS bracket, which I don't need. So we're gonna be taking that off first. There's just a little cam over like friction lock that holds these in place. Turn that and free the camera. Now I've got to do this other one. Otherwise I can't get to the screw very easily. And the other pivot is just an eight millimeter, just screw comes off. Now that camera's separate. And the screws that hold the adjusters on are just T20 Torx. I could have made some additions and weld mints and everything else to adapt this steel bracket for my truck. Or I just buy it from Send Cut Send. I designed it in CAD, they bent it, powder coated it, and shipped it to my door. Super simple. For the two adjusters that locate the camera and aim it, what I did is I actually reused the same screws that came from the original Cadillac mounting. With the camera temporarily in the mount, I'm gonna go ahead and mark the center line of the camera. Now, this doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm gonna to try to get it close. The camera's not centered in the bracket, and that's because of the electrical connector that's on the end. I need to be able to get it in and out, so I left extra room on this side for removing that connector. Using the speed square, I marked the center line of the bumper. So I'm gonna line up the mark on the bracket, and then I'm using my square here to give it a uniform distance from the front of the bumper rearward. That way it just looks centered. Using a transfer punch, I will mark the whole location. Put a piece of paper towel in here to keep metal shavings from going into the winch rope. With the bolts in place, now I gotta put the nuts and washers on. So I'm gonna use this little trick. I got a piece of tape on my wrench and I'm going to put the bolt or the nut and the washer on it and that will hold it in place while I try to fish it in there. And then out comes the wrench with the tape still stuck to it. So I'm gonna do that four more times. Now I'll just put the camera back into the mount, being careful to not slip and smash the front lens of the camera. That would end this project pretty quickly. Wiring the camera is super simple. There are only two connectors. The main connector has the power, ground, and the high-low video signal wires for the camera. The other connector carries power and ground for the lens heating element. The electrical connector for the lens heater is installed here underneath the camera, while the connector that is for the camera power and video output is on the side. Power and ground wires for the camera and the lens heater run up to the switch panel relay box that I had installed earlier on my truck. The wire for the display power is connected to the same switched relay as the camera power and runs with the other wiring across the top of the engine to pass through the firewall. All of the power and camera signal wires are protected inside a braided sleeve to prevent damage to the wire insulation. With the camera mounted, you'll need a type of monitor. I had intended to use my Pioneer head unit as the display because it has video input, but that plan changed once I tested it. There was no way to remove the text on the screen and I couldn't use the stereo's navigation functions at the same time as the camera, so that wasn't gonna work for me. You can find a display fairly inexpensively nowadays. I mean, this is a seven inch display. It was 35 bucks and it was way easier to find this and continue messing around trying to make my head unit work. Power for the display is coming from the same switch panel relay that I'm using to power the camera. 
and then it just connects up to this connector here. The next one you need is to actually terminate the wires coming from the video signal of the camera. So this adapter gets from basically a wired connection to a standard RCA connection and then just plug it in. Originally I was seeing some rolling lines on the display that varied with engine RPM and looked similar to what could happen on old analog TV sets. I added a 12 volt DC to DC converter to the camera power wire and that eliminated the problem completely. The camera and display are wired to a single button on the switch panel. The display turns on automatically when power is applied, but there is a slight delay before the image from the camera appears. The camera sees objects that are hot and thus emitting lots of infrared radiation as bright and things that are cool show up as dark. And the greater the temperature difference between the object and the environment, the easier it is to see. This is why hot engines and tires of oncoming vehicles stand out so well. It is even possible to see power line easily because of the difference in their temperature as compared to the night sky. For this next test, I had an assistant stand around 500 feet away down a park entrance driveway, a distance well outside what the truck's low beam headlights can illuminate. The thermal camera can easily see there is something out there that is giving off heat. Variations in the road, such as the painted lines, can also be seen as the paint emits infrared radiation differently than the unpainted asphalt. With their black clothing, they are hard to see with the GoPro camera until the truck was within 50 feet of them. After turning the headlights off, the thermal camera can still see them as it isn't dependent on normal illumination. It is also critical after filming a shot to not forget about the GoPro and accidentally leave it hanging on for dear life on the front bumper. Thermal camera can detect heat through the air quite well, but if there is high humidity, drizzle, or rain, the image becomes clouded. The water in the air not only scatters the thermal radiation coming from the objects, but the thermal radiation from the water itself is detected by the camera too. If everything is the same temperature from being wet, the objects become indistinguishable from each other. And like any other camera, moisture can build up on the camera lens, creating a film that obscures the image. In these examples, that's why only the hottest sources, such as car exhaust, are visible while everything else seemingly blends together. I've owned this truck for 19 years, and this thermal camera project is something I've wanted to do for a long time, ever since I saw how easy it was to adapt that Cadillac camera. In the few weeks I've had the thermal camera up and running, it has been able to spot two animals running across the road that I wouldn't have normally been able to see. I think it will be a worthwhile addition for my truck for on the road as well as on the trail. Thanks for watching.